Hello everyone, Tom to Grind here, and welcome to Patch Breakdown. Now today we're going to be going over the March 22nd patch, and if you're watching this the day it comes out, the patch came out yesterday. Now this is probably one of the biggest patches we've gotten lately, and it is just, it's insane. Now there's a lot of, you know, kind of bug fixes and UI changes and all that little stuff, and I'm not going to be going over all of that stuff because that's not what's important. I'd rather spend, you know, my time analyzing and theorycrafting and, you know, stuff like that with the bigger things that are bigger deals. So, like always, the actual patch will be in the description below if you want to read the entire thing, but I'm just going to be focusing on most of the bigger things. Um, so there, there's definitely more stuff um, that I'm not mentioning. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first of all, we got a new escort map. So that's, you know, the payload thing. And this isn't a hybrid map. This isn't, you know, anything like that. It's just straight up just 100% a payload map or escort map. And it's called Route 66. And that is actually what you're seeing right now, the gameplay you're seeing. Um, not not the best gameplay, um, but it is, it is decent. Um, start struggling a little bit, but that's besides the point. Um, so it's, it's kind of like on a, it's like a road on a gas station, you know, with roadside shops and cafes and all this stuff. And it, re it reminds me of TF2 a lot, just because, you know, it kind of has the mountain canyon area things. And it looks really, really nice. And I've played it, you know, just a little bit since, you know, the patch only came out yesterday. But it is really fun. It feels balanced, um, you know, very, very solid. And it's just really cool because it's very different from all of the other maps we've been playing. And because a lot of competitive players are, um, you know, saying that payload, they, they like payload the most as a competitive, you know, the type of competitive map. Because in control points, it's like you win a single team fight and you could possibly win the game. Whereas payload, you have to win multiple and you clearly have to be a superior player or team rather than just winning a single team fight. Um, so, you know, really cool that we got another one that's considered, you know, one of the more competitive ones. And it's definitely really, really cool. Now, that's not even the biggest thing here. The, what I consider one of the biggest things in this patch is a thing called Weekly Brawl. Now, if you play Hearthstone, it's practically the same thing as Tavern Brawl. Every week, except in the beta, every day because they want to test things, there's going to be a new kind of very fun, um, game mode. And so, as an example, the first one that came out was Super Shimada Brothers, and it was like you can only play on Hanumara, and you could only pick Genji or Hanzo, and everyone had their cooldowns reduced, and uh, but ultimates, it took longer to get your ultimates. So, I was one of the only Hanzos playing, everyone else was Genji, and I was getting my scatter arrow every like two seconds, and it was ridiculously fun, it's hilarious. Um, and there's actually, I'll leave in the description as well, someone data mined all of the, um, all of, like, the future, uh, tavern brawls or weekly brawls as Hearths or Overwatch calls it, just, you know, like, the next coming, and some of them are amazing, like, one of them is, uh, headshots only with McCree, so everyone has to pick McCree and you can only kill people with headshots, and that just seems ridiculously fun. Um, so, they said this is, you know, testing purposes, but they really like the idea, so as long as, you know, no one plays it and, you know, and no, everyone ha doesn't hate it, then, you know, this is definitely going to be something that's going to be in the main game. And it's ridiculously fun, and I can't wait for some of the other brawls. And now you also have, a lot of people were requesting this, actually, highlights. So... Whenever you get play the games, um, as long as you don't quit the actual game, um, it'll save like your most recent five highlights from your active gaming session. So you can't export them, you can't share them to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, but it allows you, say you don't want to record, um, say for me, say I was only wanting to play or get a video with play the games, but I didn't want to record my entire, you know, gaming session, I could do that and just go back and record them. I, I personally just constantly record everything because a lot of the times we're like, no, I'm not going to record now. And then, you know, I get an amazing junk ride game where I'm like 30 and 2 and I always like hate myself for that. So I just keep it always on. So it doesn't really help me, but it is nice to be able to just look at your highlights. Now, this is probably going to be uh, tweaked a little bit because... First of all, it's very limited. You can only look at the most recent five, and if you quit the game, they're all gone. So hopefully um, we can see something where you can kind of export them, maybe possibly make them, you know, just where you can export it to, you know, various websites, and that way you can share them. 
Um, but as of right now, it's very nice. Um, but I personally won't find much use in it, but I know a lot of people will. And then we have like one of the other huge things. Now, a lot of people were kind of having issues with play of the game because half the time it was a Reaper ulting and half the time it was Torbjorn, you know, just sitting behind in his turret getting kills. So they actually tweaked and changed completely how the play of the game works. Now, originally, how the play of the game kind of worked is it, it you know, it scanned the entire match and it picked one single, you know, play of the game. But, and that was normally like someone getting a huge killing spree because it was like, you know, just the way the equations and everything worked. But now it looks for four different points in the game, one being based off of high score, which is, you know, large multi kills and quick kill streaks. Lifesaver, where you're maybe saving someone, like saving a teammate. Sharpshooter, where it's to feature difficult or skillful, skillful kills. And Shutdown, where it features moments where one player kills another player as they're about to do something. So say, um, a Lucio was about to do his ultimate and a Widow snipes him in the- Widowmaker snipes him in the head. So it picks four of these, and then it analyzes those four and compares them to each other, and then it picks the best. So, as an example, people are now getting ultimates with Mercy, where, you know, it's not like she got, like, five kills with her pistol, but, you know, she's reviving people and then, you know, fighting. So, it's definitely a lot better because it now will show off supports and make people want to play supports more. Because it's not like, oh, well, if I won't play the game, I need a flashy Reaper ultimate or stuff, something like that. Um, they also changed the way player progression worked. So first of all, they added achievements and you can, you know, look at all that stuff and certain achievements unlock general and hero specific sprays, you know, the, the little things you can put on walls. So those are, ex some of them are now exclusive to, um, those achievements. And as an example, I had a spray I used that was default because it was like one of the only good sprays I had. And it was like, kind of like this, like squid creature monster thing. And it said, you've been probed. And it was, you know, it was kind of funny. Uh, it was the only like good neutral one I had, so I was using it all. But when I um, when I beat an achievement, I ended up getting that unlocked. So even if you open those in loot boxes, um, you still will probably get them as an achievement. I don't think it takes it away from you this patch. So if you have it, it's not going to take it away. Um, you just will technically get a duplicate, but that doesn't even give you the currency. So I guess it doesn't matter. Um, now players because it used to be you could go from level one to level you know whatever you know i think the highest around the time before this patch was around probably i would say 250 level 250 um so now you can only get to level 100 and your new portrait frame comes every 10 levels so the thing around your hero but every time you hit level 100 you kind of prestige or promote is what they're calling it. And you unlock a new portrait frame theme. So it's like, you know, bronze, silver, gold, all that cool stuff. And the experience required to level will be reset. So that actually means if you're playing a lot, it's going to be easier to get loot boxes because eventually it would get a lot harder. And then they added a lot of ridiculously amazing skins, including the, my, my favorites are the Nevermore Reaper skin, and the Jester Junkrat skin. Uh, all the other ones, I love all of them. And normally whenever they put out, you know, a bunch of new legendary skins, I don't like some of them. Like as an example, I know I'm gonna get, I don't know, a lot of people probably don't agree with me, but I don't necessarily like the May, or well, the May Firefighter skins, um, but they're okay, they're, they're, I just don't like like them. Um, and then one of the things I'm not a big fan of is like the Mercy, devil demon skins with the tails and you know i've talked about it before but i'm just not a big fan of that kind of stuff um but i like every single skin that came um so yeah and then they polish the way plays of the games work and now a l another thing people were constant so if you can kind of seeing a theme here most of it is just fixing the game making the game better in various ways besides the actual gameplay uh you know fixing the play of the game system the you know, all, all this stuff. And so now we have joining and leaving games. So if you continuously play games in like a single session, um, then you're gonna get experience bonuses. So as an example, say you play two games in a row, I think it's around like 200 extra experience you get. Not that much, but I'm sure it grows and it'll definitely add up. So it's kind of promoting people not to leave. Um, then if someone joins a match that ends up, and your team ends up losing, it doesn't count as a loss, but if your team wins, it does count as a win. So it's promoting people like, hey, if you join a match, it, you know, nothing wrong with that because it also gives you extra experience if you join during a match starts. 
And now if you leave a match in progress, you get an automatic loss. And if you keep on doing that, you get a temporary penalty on experience. So, you know, I don't know if it's going to work a lot because a lot of people kind of messing around might not necessarily care about their experience. Um, so one thing, if this doesn't work, I think they're going to definitely have to resort to cooldowns but i think that might fit more for competitive game modes the only problem with this is the game itself feels competitive because in tf2 you have 20 players on each team it's the most casual thing in the world that part is you know i'm not saying tf2 is casual but the majority of the way people most people play is those 20 v 20 servers and so if you're leaving and joining it doesn't matter but in this game a 6v6 game that's highly team based if you leave it's kind of a big deal even in casual so if that doesn't work they may have to do kind of tiny little cooldowns but we'll have to see then you know they fixed a lot of the ui and they improved a lot on the ways you can you can join friends you can invite friends all that good stuff they fixed a lot of that um they fixed or they made the tutorial and practice range uh, better and more polished, all that cool stuff. And so now we've gotten a bunch of amazing stuff. But of course we ha are gonna have some map balance changes and hero balance changes. And so first of all, the only hero, or the only map balance change was Nepal. And they added a new route to the first and second control points and they removed some of the walls around the second control point. So. If you don't know, Nepal is the kind of, um, it's, it's a control map and it's kind of the, it's, it's, I don't want to say Buddha cause it's not really Buddha, but it's like the really bright, um, not the, not Ilios, the Super Mario Sunshine one, but kind of the one with like the religious temples ish, if you know what I'm talking about. So the second point is going to be easier to get into and the, they, the first and second point new now have new roots. So that's nice. And now I just kind of general hero balance change. The following hero abilities will note or will now ignore payload during line of sight checks. So as an example, I'll give you the examples before I kind of explain what that is. So first of all, you have Lucio's Crossfade and Sound Barrier, Maze Blizzard, Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, Soldier 76's Biotic Field, and Zenyatta's Transcendence. So this pretty much means, say as an example, um, May Ultimates and it's the blizzard, a lot of times you can kind of hide behind a payload or something like that and it won't really hurt you if you're behind the payload, but the payload's kind of now, not transparent, but things can go through it in terms of this. So not everything, not every ultimate, but just those ultimates and those hero abilities. So that's very nice because the payload could feel kind of clunky and in the way at times. Um, so that helps that. And then the only specific hero balance change, and that is to Zenyatta. Zenyatta, his orbs, so both his orb of harmony and orb of discord now automatically return if their targets are out of line of sight for more than three seconds. And this is huge. In my opinion, this completely breaks Zenyatta. He is probably not the worst support, but he's definitely not at the top anymore, not even close. Because one of the great things you could do with Zenyatta is say there was an ro enemy Roadhog that was just harassing the crap out of you, or there was an enemy, or a better example would be there's a be there's a just annoying Tracer that's constantly, constantly, constantly harassing you. The second you see that Tracer, bam, Orb of Discord on the Tracer. So anytime she tries to flank anyone, even in a minute, say, Someone's just going to be able to fire two bullets at her and she's going to die. Now you can't do that. And on top of that, a lot of people, as an example, you have a friendly Genji that's going to go harassing people and just making it a living nightmare for your enemies. You put a Vorb of Harmony on him and he's just the ultimate ganker. You know, he can just... He can just be on his own the entire time without a team because he has the Orb of Harmony. So now this is making him... The reason they said this is because... They didn't think Zenyatta was the most overpowered person. They just didn't like the play style of people saying, okay, Orb of Discord there, Orb of Harmony there, I'm done playing Zenyatta. I'm, um, you know, so they want to promote more of a, you know, active play style with Zenyatta. So now you're actually having to be, in the moment, you're having to worry about Orb of Harmony, Orb of Discord here, Discord here, and that's kind of how I played him in the first place. But it's definitely not great that you can't just put it on an enemy flinker or a friendly flanker. And so, you know, that, that hurt Zenyatta a lot. And, you know, I think he deserved it. Um, I don't know, kind of the same discussion we were having with Lucio old, or earlier. Before Lucio got nerfed, he was easily the best. And most teams in competitive games were playing with two Lucios. So now, 
people were playing with two Zenyatas after Lucio got nerfed. So it was like, ah, we can't play with two Lucios, we'll play with two Zenyatas. But the problem is, they're going to nerf Zenyatta, and I have a feeling that they may just switch over to now, you know, two of someone else. And I think, even if they don't, I don't know if drastically nerfing all of the great supports like that are the worst. Because competitive teams aren't picking two Lucios or two Zenyattas because they're amazing, or because they're, you know, way too overpowered. They're just doing it because they're, they're just great. And... Like, as an example, I kind of worded that a little weird, but say Lucio, instead of being nerfed, everyone was buffed up to him. So Zenyatta probably wouldn't have gotten the biggest buff because, you know, he's already, he was easily the second best and he was kind of close to Lucio. So he probably wouldn't have received that much of a buff, but I feel like they should have tried to buff all the other supports like, you know, Symmetra and Mercy. And instead of having it be like, okay, we're always going to pick two Lucios or two Zenyattas, hey, maybe we pick a Lucio and then a Mercy because Mercy's actually as good as Lucio now. Because the way it is, it's like, hey, let's just stack two of the best supports. And I feel like that's the way a lot of people are going because, you know, stack two Lucios because he's the best. And once he's no longer the best, hey, let's stack two Zenyattas. So if they nerf a Zenyatta like this, people are just gonna now possibly just stack two Mercies. Or if people think Lucio's now the best support again, they're gonna stack two Lucio's. And I feel like the best way to counteract this, and because it causes a lot of people to be like, oh, I don't know if I like hero stacking. That's the problem. The problem isn't with hero stacking. Making it where you can only pick one of a person, it's like you're solving the side effect you're not actually solving the problem so if you only could hero stack if the you know hero limit was limited to one people would most likely pick a lucio and a zenyatta but that doesn't probably solve the problem because zenyatta is still ridiculously good and so i think they need to work about balancing the supports to each other rather just giving supports the nerf hammer when they seem good um but that's just my opinion uh so, you know, they increased, you know, they made the gameplay of the UI a lot better. The UI looks a lot different, and I actually, I like some of the aspects, but some of it is really ugly. Like, as an example, um, I'm sure I've held tab at some point in this gameplay, but if you look at the level, the actual place it tells you everyone's level, it's in, like, a white box. And it used to be in this, like, you know, beautiful display, but now it's just in a white box with a black border, and it looks really ugly and jarring. Um, so now, there's, you know, so there's all that stuff. There's support for Dolby Atmos headphone headphones and apparently they're things that allow you to like hear your surrounding like footsteps and all that stuff a lot better and you know there's a lot of bug fixes and they, they fixed a lot of bugs with a lot of the heroes i'm not going to go into that because we're already around 18 minutes um and i don't want to make this the longest video ever but you know probably one of the longer patch breakdowns because one of the biggest patches um, but so if you want to look at all of the things, I, I pretty much went over anything that's important. Um, but if you want to go look at all the bugs they fixed, all of the actual UI changes they did, um, go ahead and click the link in the description. And, you know, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more Overwatch content and news. And like always guys, see you next time.